For better picture quality, adjust tracking control on your VCR. What about Pam? You can tell your mother, Harold. What, Ma? Her job. Is it working out? Great, Mother. Just great. But can she still take care of you? She's just fine, Mom. Really. Forgive me for asking, Harold, but her job, this apartment, so much to take care of. Maybe a maid would help out. She can handle it. Mom, Pam's a genius. I could come over, help with the laundry. No trouble. Is that a new shirt? No, Pam washed it. She used this. Salvo. It sure seems to do a good job. Oh, and tablets. Looks easy. Pam says it makes life a little bit simpler. Salvo. Uh, relax, Mom. No one takes better care of her husband. Oh! Hey, you two talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, sure Salvo tablets. Real help for the busy working woman. Hey, Bunkaneers. Hey, Bunkaroos. Welcome back to episode three of Bunker Show Videos. Uh, we're recording live from my living room this afternoon. Uh, as you can tell, I've let myself go. It's week six of quarantine, and I am no longer a victim to the tyranny of fashion or beauty standards. Fuck it. The back of my head looks like the end of the Zapruder film. I'm done giving a shit. Uh, you get no facade. I, I pulled back the curtain, and this is what you get. No CG this time. Uh, welcome to the show. If you're enjoying it, hit like or subscribe. It lets me know that you're watching, uh, and it helps motivate me to make more of these. Um, I've promised not to monetize the show. I don't want to make money on this, but I do like to provide uh, visibility and a platform for a different nonprofit every week. This week, I'm dedicating the show to LifeWire. Uh, LifeWire provides uh, services, counseling, uh, shelter for people who uh, may be affected by domestic abuse and domestic assault. As a survivor of domestic assault myself and uh, being raised in a domestic violence situation, uh, I understand the fear uh, and the impact that that can have, especially when you're uh, in a stay-at-home situation where you have to live with your abuser. LifeWire provides necessary services uh, for people who may need a lifeline in this situation. So please uh, give what you can. Give a dollar. Give two dollars. If you receive the check, uh, for $1,200 and it has Donald Trump's signature on it and you're thinking of doing some pro-left uh, revolutionary idea of burning it, just give it to fucking LifeWire. Take that evil and give it to angels. Uh, LifeWire. Uh, you can see uh, where the address is, where my mouth is right now. Please give to them whatever you can. Uh, if nothing else, retweet, give them support, give them visibility. Uh, it's a very important time. Now, let's get to tonight's show. Uh, a couple themes. Uh, one, character actors. Uh, rest in peace, Brian Dennehy. Uh, Brian Dennehy died this week, uh, one of uh, America's foremost character actors. Uh, you've seen him in everything. So tonight, I decided why not showcase some commercials uh, with other famous character actors, people that you would probably recognize from TV and film, uh, who started out in commercials. It, I peppered them throughout the show, uh, as well as f focusing on bands that uh, are all friends of mine. Um, Wiscon, Wendy Jane Bantam. Uh, we're starting off with Goblet. Goblet is J.T. Haversat and Jay Wolf's uh, sort of fun fantasy band. Uh, you'll see what I mean by fantasy in a second. J.T. is my label mate at Stand Up Records. Stand Up Records is putting out my new album, Macho Caballero, which comes out April 24th because we picked the release date three months ago before the fucking world caught on fire. So, as anyone who's followed my career, in air quotes, you know that I am uh, constantly being nut-checked by destiny and fate. Uh, so, as with everything else that I've done, it has hit a fucking hurdle. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to release in the middle of a fucking pandemic, which some of you might go like, that's a great idea because so many people are at home. 
Nope, everyone's tired of fucking stand up. So if you do uh, want to check it out, or you're bored, or you just can't find any music, or you're like, I just want to hear a guy with a lisp yell at me for an hour, uh, go check out my album, Mantra Caballero. It'll be available on Spotify, iTunes, Tidal, uh, anywhere that streaming is available, and you can purchase it as well, which I would love. I did not make physicals, no CDs, no albums. Let's do our best to help the uh, the ecology of the planet by not using uh, petroleum products. Uh, you don't need a physical, right? What are you going to do with it anyways? Put, show, show it off? Nobody's going to care. Uh, again, nut checked by destiny. No one knows who I am. So uh, please go check out my album. I will say this. It is the best thing I've ever done. I am very grateful to Dan Schlissel and Ian Rands and everyone at Stand Up Records who helped make this a reality. Uh, as with every piece of product that I put out, uh, it, it, it is a high quality well thought out, uh, uh, well paced and well written set and probably the best hour I've ever done. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and also the cover is the coolest thing I've ever done. I, if you have followed me, you know that my album covers, uh, I usually pick Amazing artists to do great work. They, they, the covers are probably better than the albums. Uh, and this one is no exception. Tonight's show, I'm uh, going to be doing a little interview with the cover artist, uh, uh, comic book illustrator and painter Tom Neely uh, from Glenn and Henry. You may recognize or, or many his many image titles, image comics. Uh, Tom Neely is going to be on the show. We're going to talk for a little bit about the album, and I'm going to fanboy out uh, with one of my favorite artists. Uh, speaking of which... Uh, my other favorite artist, John Crop, sent me a, a short that he made in, I'm going to say 1990. I'm sure there's a timestamp, but I forget what it, it's definitely early 90s, uh, featuring another great character actor you'll recognize, and I'm not going to blow who it is. It's a surprise, uh, but he and John made a short that's really funny and is definitely, uh, it is a it is a, a, a piece of uh, that time, captured forever on film. Uh, super fun. Videos, commercials, character actors, rest in peace, Brian Dennehy, please give to LifeWire.org. Now, without further ado, a clean, thrilling, uh, streamlined version of Bunker Show Videos with Derek Sheen, me, your host. Hit like or subscribe, give to LifeWire. Now, without further ado, let's get this shit on the road. Uh, here comes Goblet. This is a new one called Warlock of Rock! Yeah. <laughs> aroma for you, but not for mosquitoes. Pick is easy to use. Light it and forget it. Pick's aroma keeps mosquitoes, gnats, and sand flies away. Pick is the best protection for barbecues, fishing and camping trips, or just relaxing in the yard. So if you don't want our company ever anywhere, just like Pick and see what I mean? Bye! <laughs> Under the mustache, there's a, another mud. Your heart is dry, can't 
Bill Bailey may be the luckiest night watchman in the world. For a few hours, he's got Woolworth all to himself. For wandering, browsing, fun shopping. There's always something new. What now? The Magnus Chord Organ. The only musical instrument that anyone can play in minutes. Even Bill, who can't read a note of music, will be playing hundreds of his favorites. Just follow the keyboard numbers and push the chord buttons here. He's onto it now. You know the whole Bailey family can have fun with this. Hey, what an idea for Bill Jr.'s birthday. At prices as low as $29.95, anyone can be talented. A Magnus organ is really music to your ears, especially on Woolworth's layaway plan.
I hope you're having fun. I hope you're enjoying the show. I hope you are washing your hands for 20 seconds or 20 minutes. I I don't, honestly don't remember. But you know what? Just to be safe, let's go ahead and wash our hands for 20 minutes. Uh, scalding hot water. Uh, steam must come out of the sink, uh, out of the basin. Uh, put your arms in. Uh, direct contact for up to 20 minutes uh, The until the first layer of skin uh, just sloughs off your arm from the elbow to the fingertips like you're sliding off dinner gloves. Uh, so, uh, that, and you know what? You'll be fine. Your body will regrow that skin. It's a biological miracle. If you haven't seen the human body, Google it or do do a wiki, wiki, wiki that. Uh, thank you so much for checking out the show. Please give to LifeWire.org. Uh, again, LifeWire.org. Uh, they, they're they they're doing amazing work right now. Very necessary and they need our help. Uh, everybody needs our help right now. If you like the artists that you're seeing on the show, contribute to them by buying their product or leaving them a nice comment. Find them on Instagram. Find them on Twitter. Uh, find them on YouTube and Spotify and Bandcamp and Pandora. Uh, give them a spin and say something nice to them. Now, here's my interview with Tom Neely. And uh, Tom is an amazing artist. He's a painter. He's a comic book artist. Uh, the Humans on uh, Image. Uh, the sequel's coming out very soon. Uh, Henry and Glenn, Forever and Ever. If you're not familiar with that, I believe Thanagraphics carries it. Um, it's it's Henry Rollins and Glenn Danzig, and they're in love. That's all you need to know. Uh, Tom is an amazing artist, a really good fellow, and I uh, was very fortunate, uh, dumb luck, that I got to work with him. And he did an amazing cover for my album, Macho Caballero, which comes out next Friday, April 24th, in the middle of a fucking pandemic. So just go Spotify it, please, for the love of Christ. Uh, Tom does amazing work. This is a really fun interview. Uh, I cut it down from 25 minutes to about 12 or 13 because uh, Tom is great in this interview and I am unwatchable because I just became like a Chris Farley style fanboy. It was one of those, <laughs> it, you can't, here's what I forget because I've been in quarantine so long. Um, when you're typing to someone, uh, you can just erase a word and you can take some time, pace around your living room, try to choose the right language. Uh, but when you're talking to people directly, uh, words just come out and you can't put them back. They're already out there. So uh, I edited this down a little bit because I was a, I, I butterfucked half the things coming out of my mouth. I was forgetting words because I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Uh, Tom is a great guy. Super fun. We talked about horror movies. We talked about music. Uh, and he put up with my dumb speech impediment for almost 25 minutes. Uh, please enjoy uh, my friend and, our, and a brilliant artist, uh, Tom Neely, everybody. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. I haven't done the Zoom, so uh, I forget there's a uh, there's a time lag. I apologize. Yeah, just slightly. Uh, you're in your office. Look at all the cool stuff on the walls. Yep, this is my studio. I've got your. Uh... Oh wait. Pull this over. Let's see that I've got. Uh... Oh shit! Look at that artwork right there. Oh, that is so cool. Ha! That is amazing. <laughs> oh, man, that's so awesome. Yeah. How you doing? You I'm good. Up? Yeah, how about you? Are you sane? Yeah, yeah, staying pretty sane, just drawing every day. So it's been pretty good. The, uh, the last podcast in the left book just came out recently, and so that's been pretty exciting. So... My copy yeah. done order. I'm uh, the cover is so killer. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Amazing. You know, I I, to, I told you like when I did. Um, I think I mentioned I did Meltdown uh, a few years ago, and they used to give you a gift certificate to go out in the store after the show, and right. buy sixty bucks worth of stuff. And I picked up your mini, uh, and, and I hadn't. I hadn't. I just. I didn't know. I was like, oh, it looks like a like somebody did a creepy comic cover with all these classic. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think you might, yeah, uh, I've, I, I, I was like, oh bit. man, I fell in love with it immediately. And I told Dan, like, one of these days I gotta, I gotta meet this dude. Cause I want, I want, I want him to do my album cover. And then uh, when he was like, Hey, Tom Neely's available. I fell off my chair. Cause I went, holy <laughs> shit, like, it's sitting, it sits right on my desk. So. Oh, that's awesome. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and that covered the new book cover. I was like, that is so perfect. Cause it's kind of the same thing. It's that sort of, uh, uh, 
that that weird collection of uh, of, of murderers and, and weirdos that you know that hall dark hall of fame kind of thing and i loved it yeah i definitely got to have fun doing sort of my own uh we kind of approach it as like a mad magazine of serial killers so like <laughs> having to do a lot of fun switching up styles throughout the book is a lot of fun but yeah the cover is definitely an homage to uh a lot of the old EC comics horror covers that I loved when I was a kid. So oh yeah. I to today, but yeah. Uh, do you do? You, are there? I haven't gotten the book yet, so I haven't seen it. But are there illustrations as well inside the book? Yeah, I did over eighty illustrations throughout the whole book. So yeah, uh, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. So how is stuff at home? Are you 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 doing all right? You holding up down there? Yeah, we're doing pretty good. We've been on lockdown for officially, I think, a month as of yesterday. Um, I, I mean, for me, it's kind of normal. I'm usually here in my studio. This is my, actually my backyard. It's a converted garage studio. So um, I'm just here drawing every day, uh, working on my comic series, the, hu uh, the sequel to my series, The Humans, um, right now. And uh, it's called The Jungle, but I've been just Trying to draw every day and keep. And that, keep that's on through. image, right? Yeah. yeah. Image? Okay. The image I've just done uh, the humans, which was a ten ten issue series. Now it's collected as two volumes, and we're working on the sequel series called The Jungle right now, which will hopefully come out sometime next year as the comics industry refigures itself out after all this. <laughs> the thing is, is that I think that as far the the worst news is for like the bigger publishers like Marvel and DC and and comic shops themselves because they're all small businesses but uh i think comics as an art form will be fine it'll reform and reshape in new ways it already is and uh and then i think like a lot of the more independent publishers uh and small press stuff like you know or independents like fanographics and drawn and quarterly like uh those publishers will weather through this because they're they're more dealing with like books than comics anyway so it's kind of a different form but I think the industry will just have to reshape, but the art form will still keep keep happening no matter what. I mean, I'm, that's why I'm just going to still keep drawing and oh, yeah. let them figure out what happens afterwards. So <laughs> Leave that to the other guys to figure out. The art yeah. part will be great, but it's just the distribution part is going to be a nightmare. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. now uh, all comedy is dead because it just happens on the internet now in people's living rooms. So. Right. <laughs> Luckily, okay. some people are good at it. We, we even without an audience, but you can see there's, there's a very fine line, or you can see like those who can't do without an audience sometimes. Yeah, so. the struggle is real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I am stoked about the everyone I've showed the cover to uh, for the album just lost their mind. Yeah, the coolest I, thing. It was fun to do. I'm and and it's a joke, like every out. joke is on the album cover. Like I think every track is on there, represented on there. That that was my idea was to try and like get every joke in there somehow without, you know, spoiling it too much. But I wanted to like, you know, I grew up like watching, you know, with a lot of heavy metal and punk rock album covers would have a lot of detailed artwork and stuff. And I'd love to like, you know, read the lyrics and then like figure out what was in the graphics. So it's kind of like, I wanted is, people to like listen to your album and then to be like, oh yeah, that's that joke. So <laughs> that's what I was saying when I saw it. I was like, this is so cool because it has. Uh, I mean, it just it has some um, some replay value, you know, in the sense that if you listen to the album and you look at the cover, there's so many little uh, hidden clues to stuff on there that you know, the more you listen to it, the more the album cover is going to open up for people, which I thought was so fucking fun. And it's one of my favorite things when I would say, you know, like having those. Uh, those that sort of conceptual continuity in the art was always part of the package, you know, it wasn't just the album. It was always the stuff that came with it, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it was all inspired by your, your album because I got to, I listened to it three or four times while working on this and it's hilarious. I loved oh, every bit I'm of it. Glad so. you like it. I'm so sorry that you had to, that it was in your head more than once. Uh, but oh, no, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> it's my favorite so far. Uh, and, and man, oh man. And, such a, uh, um, I'm still, I'm staring, when I'm staring down, because I forget that we're uh, on a computer and I'm looking at the, at the album artwork on your board. Uh, <laughs> but, because um, I originally, I had this idea in my head to, to do like a Tama Finland thing. And, right. And this was like, such a revelation. It was so much like, it just it was such a much better and more fully realized idea. And 
just elevated the whole package to a, a whole other place, which was I'm forever grateful for what you did. Thanks. I'm glad. <laughs> Not to mention, I, yeah, I, I love. I mean, I love the Tom Finland idea initially because I, I love that artist so much. Um, uh, but yeah, just like the more I listened to it, I thought like we can we can bring more to this than that. So like, yeah, it was, it was fun to just expand on it. And I'm glad you guys loved it. I think it was around December last year. I was just like, hey, I'm kind of free right now. Do you have any comedy albums you want? And he's like, well, we still haven't put out Derek's, so we, we still have you. So I was like, perfect. So. I was glad it worked out because uh, yeah, it was it was it's my first time I've done a comedy album. So I've done a lot of metal and punk and like whatnot album covers, but it's really fun to. I've, I've, I mean, a huge comedy fan. I listen and watch to comedy while drawing all the time because it's the best thing to listen to while drawing. Either that or audiobooks. So yeah, uh, I'm like account. that with driving. I, I notice the same thing. I don't listen to music as much when I'm when I'm task oriented. It's got to be right. Driving, you know, I just do better. I feel like I'm more. Uh, What's the word? I'm, I'm just more engaged when I'm hearing something that is conversational. Yeah. Uh, works so much better, especially even when I'm writing. Like, I can't listen to music because I start thinking about music. Right. I'm like, <laughs> that's an interesting key change. That's a time signature I've never heard. What are they doing right there? And I just get, I go down the rabbit hole. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I have different yeah. phases in my work when I'm, when I'm writing or, or uh, like, penciling or designing like drawing the initial drawings or sketches i have to listen to like music or nothing but then when I, once i'm doing the inking of the final art i can listen to like people talk or music or podcasts or audiobooks or a lot of comedy and like literally at the end of every like comedy special i listen to i'm like damn it i need another one where's the next one so <laughs> I'm, I'm glad i'm glad people are going to get yours uh what it's next week right yeah next uh, i think next thursday or something or next awesome. Friday, the 24th, yeah, release day. Uh, it's going to come out at a better time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, people need it. <laughs> cross. Hey, so can I ask, what, what, are you, what are you listening to right now? What is stuff that's on your, uh, in your ears? Um, what am I listening to, like music-wise? Um, yeah. I, I've been listening to this band, Holy Sons, a lot this week. Do you know them? No. I'm looking them up. Uh, here's one of their records. Oh, it's kind of shiny here. But uh, it's uh, one of the mem it's this guy, Emil Amos, who's in the band uh, Grails and Ohm. But yeah. it's uh, like his solo work. And I don't know, it's, it's really like weird, moody kind of, I don't know how to describe it, but it's now good. I'm picking um, it up. We, uh, my girlfriend just got the, uh, the Danzig Sings Elvis album. So we've uh, been uh, listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> for better or worse it's uh it's 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 a fun one <laughs> and so it got it was the first fight my wife and i've had in quarantine oh yeah yeah because i put it fight? on she got so fucking mad at me right away like she's <laughs> not a dancing person and i just didn't know it but she's like a a, a violently anti-dancing person and uh <laughs> i discovered that i discovered that in quarantine when i was like oh fuck oh, wow. Danzig out me doing Elvis tunes. This is the perfect transition for Elvis. And then I put on, um, uh, I don't, I don't remember what, which, which song I heard first. Cause she, it lasted 30 seconds before she uh, was like, this is it. This is where it's going <laughs> to happen. And she was like, I like that song. That's one of my favorite Elvis songs. And I don't give a fuck about Danzig. And I was like, wow, I didn't know you hated him so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. My, my girlfriend actually loves both Danzig. The Gand Elvis, so it's like kind of her dream album. So, and uh, I, I mean, it's, I have to say, I, I like how lo-fi it is. It's it's not it's not bad, uh, but I, it 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 does everything he does gives me more ideas for my comics. Henry and Glenn, or, or proves the point that I should have made those comics. <laughs> it, it's like, there's points where I'm just like, really, what? <laughs> 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 or you know if, i don't know if you've seen his movie veronica yet but it's oh, it's the worst I, movie that will ever be made it's it's astounding i'm hearing compare so i just read the bloody disgusting review of it uh-huh they were i mean they easily compared it to the room of course but but uh but Bra uh miska said that it's uh he's like it's better than the room because it's worse <laughs> so i'm excited i haven't been able to find it on demand yet and i think i'm gonna have to order it from scarecrow which is the you know, sort of the big uh, uh, underground video place out here that still is open. Right. Um, oh, that's nice. 
Yeah, they're the last one. I think they're the biggest video store in the country, but they do like a bunch of um, hard to find titles on VHS and Laserdisc and we've got a huge collection, but now they're a nonprofit, like a library. Oh, wow. But I can't find it on On Demand and I really want to see it, but I'm going to have to see it alone because there's (laughs) no way my wife's going to go for it. If it's even has Glenn Danzig's name on it, I can't get in that fight again. I saw it it in the theater with Danzig doing a Q and A afterwards here in LA, and it was uh, again his Q and A kind of proved everything to me that that uh, yeah I don't know it was it was amazing. I he's he has no self awareness of what he's done. I don't think that's what I wanted to ask. What I was going to ask you, like, was it was he did he understand why people were laughing? Because I people were laughing, right? I mean, they oh. He actually was trying to tell us that we weren't laughing. Yeah, and we were laughing hysterically, but he was telling us that, I don't know, it was it was mind-blowing listening to him talk about his movie. <laughs> oh, God. The people gave him money. They gave him money to make it, you know? He's making another one right now. So oh, God, he's just the, the U bowl of, our, of the next generation. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, like, that, that's, oh. a, that's a better comparison. Uh, Yui Bowl is probably a better comparison than uh, Ed Wood or anything. Yeah. Because at least Herschel Gordon Lewis's movies have a heart, you know? Like, Wizard yeah. of War has a center where you can at least grab on and go, there's a narrative here. I can, I, there's a yeah. story. But as a full story arc, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, watched I'm a sure. really. A really good one I found uh, the other day. I think if, if, I think it was on Prime called The Ruining uh, from 1996. Have you heard of this? No. It's it's, uh, it's it was like 1996. It had to have been like, I mean, it, it feels like a film made in the, it definitely post slacker, but it still feels more like Hershey Gordon Lewis because it's a weird sci-fi horror movie. It's got Wings Hauser, who you probably know from other B yep. and C grade movies. I he has a weird that. just cameo appearance in it that's that's hilarious. But yeah, look it up. I think it's on Amazon Prime. It's got Patrick and it's, Warburton in it. Yeah, it's so <laughs> low grade, but it's amazing. I was mesmerized. It even has like stop motion animation at the end. It's great. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I love that. Best thing I've found on the during the quarantine so far. <laughs> well, I better. I should let you go because I know you're you're a busy guy. Um, but this was awesome. Fun. I hope this was fun for you. And I, uh, by the way, I cannot, uh, in words, uh, uh, express how uh, uh, stoked and how honored I am that I get to have your artwork on the cover of my comedy album. Uh, it's a dream come true, and it's so kick-ass. And uh, uh, and I'm glad that I got a chance to meet you and talk to you at uh, this deal because that is that's just uh, that's uh, that's that's better than selling an album. That is uh, that's something I get to take with me. So. Well, likewise, I loved working on it. Uh, so happy to see it come out next week. I hope people listen to it and laugh for hours because it's great. I listened to it multiple times, and yeah, I'll probably listen to it again next week. So yeah, then, it was awesome working with I'll you. I'll put your website and stuff on the show as well so people can reach sure. out and, and look you up and contact yeah. you. And um, I, again, I, I'm, thanks so much for doing this uh, and, and being on the show. You're the first, first guest oh, on awesome. my dumb show. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed the first two, so yeah, I'll be watching more. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, this next one's going to be fun. And uh, and thanks again, Tom. Uh, be safe. Be well. Yeah, you too. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Stay Thank well. You. See you. Bye. Chicken licking. I'd like. We're closed, lady. My cousin's dropped in. Lady, I'm mopping up. What are you mopping with? What am I mopping with? What kind of cleanup? A liquid. Make some spick and span. Spick and span? Want to get home? It'll put power in the water. Go over where you just clean. But it's clean. Look, Spick and Span wouldn't leave all that greasy dirt. Hey, thanks, lady. If there's anything I could ever do for you. I have these cousins who dropped in. Spick and Span gets the dirt liquid cleaners leave behind. Look just-
just like someone from church or someone you went to school with back when. When the devil comes down, down to the water, it'll be a beautiful summer day. Be wearing blue jeans, a baseball cap, maybe a Boston Red Sox tank top. He'll have a smile on his face, but other than that, he'll look just like everybody
I don't feel too good. This will make you feel better. Let's go. I know, yeah. Oh, cool. Come in here for? I don't know, dude. MTV. Why the G string? Did you say that? No <laughs> way. Who said that? I don't know who said that, dude. No way. I said that. Whoa. Whoa. Did you say that? Yes. Here's your G string. Thanks. No problem. I got what I came for. It's time to learn the new winger, too. Oh, yeah. See ya. Hey, want to smoke the rest of the split for them, dude? Yeah! There you go. Choosy woman's choice. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say tonight was a rousing success. You had fun. I had fun. We made it out alive. You're in your PJs. Probably got a glass of red wine or a glass of white wine. You got your cat on your lap or your dog on your lap. You've probably been, maybe you've been puffing on some jazz cigarettes and getting all loosey-goosey. Uh, I can't thank you enough for sticking around, uh, checking out the show. If you enjoy the bands that you saw tonight, please do me a favor. Again, go look them up on Spotify. Go look them up on Bandcamp or Pandora. Go leave them a nice review. Go buy their product. Um, they contribute to the show for free. And, I, of course, I bring you the show for free every week. Um, as a result of that, I like to give back to the community. So if you can, please go look up LifeWire.org this week. Drop some money in their pocket, please. They need it and they do great work. Uh, LifeWire.org. I want to thank my friends John Crop and Brian Posehn from 1990. Uh, that was a fun treat that I was had a hard time keeping a lid on. Uh, thanks again, you guys. That was super fun, and, and what a trip back, uh, back to the past. Um, I would love to thank Tom Neely. Tom was great. That interview with Tom, Tom was great. Tom was great. Tom was great. 
Uh, Tom made that watchable, and I thank Tom uh, for putting up with me for 25 minutes. Tom was great. Uh, what, a, what a coup. Um, uh, what a fun album, by the way. If you get a chance to pick it up, I am the most proud of it. It's the best thing I've, I've ever done. Uh, Macho Caballero. It's available April 24th. You can go pick it up wherever. Or, you know what? If you fucking steal it, I don't care. It's a pandemic. Go treat yourself, right? Um, again, LifeWire.org. Hit like or subscribe. Let me know that I'm doing okay. Leave me a nice comment. Say something nice to me. I have no self-esteem left. I've been trapped indoors for six fucking weeks. I don't know how to interact with people anymore. I've forgotten face, just face-to-face -face conversation. I've forgotten all of the rules and protocols that go into that. So say something nice. Engage me. Uh, I have a great time doing this. If you want to send me a video and you want your art or your content on the show, uh, and it's not copyrighted like the Beatles Day Tripper and it's not going to cost me $20 million in legal fees, then um, send it to me at Derek Sheen, uh, Derek Sheen 666 at gmail.com. That's Derek Sheen 666 at gmail.com. Uh, make sure it's a high-res file and I'll make sure to get it on the air if it's, if it's good and the sound quality is awesome or whatever. I mean, as long as it's not like hardcore gay pornography, which I have, I have, I just can't put it, I can't put it on YouTube. I Believe me, I've tried. Uh, but uh, um, please uh, send me your stuff. Uh, say nice things to artists. Uh, contribute to LifeWire.org. Hit like or subscribe. Keep watching the show. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll probably see you guys next week. Be safe.
June Lockhart, and I've served a lot of fried chicken to my family. But fried chicken can be a little greasy. That's why I'm so happy with shake and bake. You shake and bake. No frying. So your chicken comes out crispy, but not greasy like fried chicken. Mmm, you can really taste the difference. Crispy, but not greasy like fried chicken. Shake and bake. It's better than frying.